Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and today we are going to take a look at another German World War II rifle suppressor. We have the L26 pattern. If you haven't seen it, I have, by the time you're seeing this, at least one other video up on a different pattern, um, specifically the L27. So the Germans experimented with two different types of suppressors during World War II. They had designs like this, which is made uh, with removable metal baffles kind of like what we would normally expect to see in a suppressor today. The same sort of system that goes back to the Maxim silencers. And then they also experimented with what they called what the Russian system, essentially a copy of the Russian Bromit uh, suppressor. And the Bromit is copy is the L27, which we looked at previously. This is the L26, which is, well, it's a surprisingly modern style of suppressor inside. Now it's an 8mm bore diameter, and so this was intended for all of the different German 8mm weapons, small arms. So this could be used with the Car 98K, the G43, or the MP44 family. Now this particular one is set up for a Car 98K. Let me show you that, and then let's take it apart and take a look at the baffles. <laughs> I don't normally wear gloves, unless usually museums request it. Uh, in this case I'm putting on gloves because the baffles inside this thing are really pretty darn grungy. So first off, this has the same sort of mounting system as the German rifle grenade launchers. So it's an over the muzzle clamp. This lifts up like that, and it's just going to clamp right over the muzzle of the rifle and lock down. And in fact we can demonstrate that. That's going to sit right there. This clamps over. I can get that screw started. There we go. And that simply clamps on like so. By the way, this one is actually marked L26, which was the, the German uh, designation. There are no other markings on it, these weren't serialized. These were patented by a guy whose uh, name sounds vaguely like Schatzle, uh, whose German pronunciation I'm not quite going to get right. But uh, very simple, very much like a modern suppressor actually. The whole body unscrews, <laughs> and actually this has a, a lot of threading in here, so we'll fast forward through this. Ooh, there we go. Uh, worth noting, if you watched the previous video, this is right hand threaded because the bullet is not going through anything solid, so the bullet's not exhorting any torque on the body of the suppressor to cause it to untwist or unscrew. So standard right hand threading. And then we have a stack of six metal baffles, and they're all identical. They're simply conical baffles. So really a very simple system. Each one of these is smooth on the inside and, well, this one's all worn away, but then they have uh, steps on the outside. And so when you stack them together, you're actually providing space in here for gas to disperse inside each of these cones. So it's going to work just like a typical modern suppressor. Now, the plan was to manufacture a thousand of these um, they had problems with uh, breakage, however, and production was cancelled part way through. Unfortunately, I don't know how many were actually produced, and it's not clear exactly what was breaking on them. Uh, but I will say that this is probably this is a suppressor that's actually going to have a much longer lifespan, practical lifespan, than something that uses essentially disposable rubber baffles. It's going to be relatively easy to manufacture. There's nothing in this, it just holds the baffle stack. This requires a forging to start with, but it's probably the same forging that was used for the rifle grenade launchers, the same basic one. Uh, so this would all be relatively easy to put into production. Naturally, of course, this means this wouldn't be the German final design. They would need to come up with something more complicated, but we'll cover that in a later video. Since all of the baffles are, in fact, identical, one of the things that can be done to actually further increase the lifespan of the, the can, of course it's the very first baffle that takes the brunt of the blast 
uh, every time you fire. So once the first one gets overly worn, you can just swap it to the other end of the can, and now you've got a relatively, well, much less worn uh, baffle at the back, and you can continue doing that and, and really extend the lifespan before you have to replace the baffles. Lastly, just for comparison's sake, here is the L26 alongside the L27. So you can see that the, the metal uh, baffle design is actually larger in volume. It's a little bit longer, and it's a little bit larger in diameter, and a small increase in diameter will actually have a big impact on volume. So not quite as quiet as a, a rubber sealed can, but I think this was definitely the better general purpose unit. Not that these actually saw general purpose use. As an interesting side note, we actually have records that 200 of the, well, 1500 of these were ordered for the MG42, which would be a really interesting thing. Um, they were ordered in May of 44, and uh, 200 of them were actually sent to the field. So that's kind of impressive, actually, that they got that much production done and actually sent them out. As with the L27, we really don't have any detailed information on specific times or places that these were used. We know they were predominantly used by German uh, elite special operations type units, which kind of makes sense. Uh, it's worth pointing out that these suppressors, with the sort of the traditional metal baffles, uh, were intended to be used with all manner of ammunition. They were not restricted to subsonic like the Brahmit copies were. So uh, potentially this would have a wider application. You wouldn't need to adjust your sights with this in the way that you would with the, the L27s, the Brahmit style. Anyway, these are extremely rare. Uh, you can tell obviously this one has been dug up out of the ground somewhere, and that's how most, if not all, of the surviving examples uh, are in fact found. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I have at least one more video on interesting World War II suppressors coming, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.